Welcome, Professor Virgo, and thank you very much for spending your time with me to go through some questions about digital education futures. So, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and also your role as Senior Pro Vice Chancellor for Education here at the University of Cambridge? So, I am a lawyer, is my uh, area of academic research and teaching. Uh, I've actually been involved in the University of Cambridge for a long time. I was a student at Cambridge and uh, been a fellow uh, of one of the colleges for over 30 years. So, so I know Cambridge well. Uh, and for the last uh, six years, I've been one of the Pro Vice Chancellors with particular responsibility for education. And uh, the last two years, I've been the Senior Pro Vice Chancellor. Wow. So in your view, and also possibly in your role as well, actually, what are the kind of new exciting models of education that are coming out? So online education and digital education, however we describe it, is clearly right at the forefront. Uh, obviously with the pandemic, mm -hmm. the university and the colleges have had to pivot to, well, immediately the pandemic hit to all remote online teaching and remote and online assessment. And what we're doing this year, bearing in mind the restrictions of the pandemic, mm -hmm. is a blended approach to learning. And that really is opening up all sorts of opportunities. I should emphasise that Cambridge remains a residential degree programme and being present in Cambridge is really important. Mm. We are seeing, even in our residential programmes, what the possibilities of online education are. But also online education enables us to engage with the world. So we're looking at all sorts of opportunities to develop other courses which will have a global reach uh, in all sorts of different areas and different parts of the university. So what are the major challenges that you think we're facing at the moment in digital education? Uh, I think there were quite a few. Uh, so we could focus on academic staff and I could focus on my own recent experiences. I'm trying to put my lectures <laughs> online, which is not straightforward as somebody who's not uh, particularly a digital native. So I think one thing is the ability of academics to engage with new forms of teaching. And actually it's confidence is a lot mm. of of it, it's just saying like give it a go we can support you and get you there um i mean i often describe academics as being on a spectrum uh so there is one end where they are just used to thinking digitally and using technology etc and at the other end and i think i'm most definitely at the other end <laughs> a complete fear of the unknown but a lot of people are on that spectrum with a desire to engage with digital uh, education. On the student side, I think students are certainly uh, much more digitally native, but there is a real concern we have, and we were certainly seeing this earlier in the year, uh, with uh, digital poverty, digital mm -hmm. deficit. There are people who simply lack the uh, technical facilities to engage with digital education but also um, sometimes it's just the, the physical space that they are maybe living with uh, a number of people uh, in close contact they don't have that quiet space so I think that's an issue that's okay. of real concern particularly as we are moving uh, digital education out not just from university but uh, to children and actually lifelong learning as well so I think yes. digital poverty is an issue and then there is actually what the tech is out there. Clearly, there is, there is a massive amount out there, too much, and therefore trying to work out what's important, what's useful. But so sometimes realising we have things that need to be done and the tech isn't there yet. So m m getting the match with is going to be really important. Yeah, it's that challenge between what's been built and actually the kind of requirements that we need as educators or students, um, and we're all lifelong learners. And that's, yes. that's kind of one of the things that we're, we're all faced with this challenge. And I, you were talking about, I think one of the key things is this inequity. 
um because that's really important the digital poverty that you're talking about so one of the obviously great things about the DEFI center the digital education futures initiative is that, like how could we take this forward um, um and how do you think we could do it from your perspective so i mean obviously there are all sorts of different perspectives on yeah. on the center and 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 its work depending on the nature of education uh, so obviously uh, the impact in schools could be very different from that for a lifelong learner. But from my perspective, I think it is getting a really good understanding of what the needs are, which can be challenged. I mean, I'm always open for challenge with new pedagogy, with new ideas, new approaches, and we, and we do need to have that challenge. But I think as educators, our voice is important to say look we want to do this what is the best way of doing it and crucially not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Um, <laughs> quite a lot of what we do in terms of face-to-face -face teaching etc works and we can prove it works it can be supported and expanded mm -hmm. it's where the blended the hybrid uh, learning is so important so frankly, I think really what I'm saying is there needs to be a dialogue between educators, those being educated and those who are able to provide the tech mm -hmm. and, and are able to think very creatively about what the, the new opportunities are. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. Thank you.